to look into your word. We pray you speak into our lives in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray that you are going to expound your word to us. Everyone needs a word from you, and our word might be different. Lord, you know the need of everyone here, but I pray that you are going to grant our needs according to your riches in glory in Jesus' name. Let your spirit lead us and guide us, O oh Lord, and let your presence abide with us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Ah, you people are too cold. Are you afraid of the storm? I said, praise the Lord. If you, are, if you know you are not afraid of the storm, I said, praise the Lord. Amen. We are looking at Mark chapter 4 today. Mark chapter 4, from verse 2 to 20. And we will be considering the topic, the sower, the word, and you. The sower, the word, and you. Mark chapter 4, from verse 2. And he taught many things by parables as said unto them in doctrine. Verse 3. Akin, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Another fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that had, and he that had years to year, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him of the parable, and he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Verse 12. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they, might, they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And now then will ye know all parables. The sower soweth the word. And, they, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they were offended. And these are they which are sown among tongues, such as hear the word, and the cares of this word, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and in becoming of fruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some hundred. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. See, Jesus told a parable, and Jesus liked to speak in parables, especially to the um, Christians of those days, because they were, most of them were farmers and fishermen. And Jesus loved to tell stories, you know, so that they will understand, so that they will get it. He liked to use common things to explain your common thing. He likes to use the natural to explain the supernatural. He likes to use the ordinary to explain the extraordinary. But despite his efforts, some people don't get it, you know. It's not everyone who hears, actually hears. And that is why in verse 9, if you look at verse 9, he said, And he said unto them, after he had spoken, he said, He that had years to year, let him do what? Let him hear. Because it's not everybody that hears, actually hear. Remember when Jesus was baptized in water? What happened to him? Uh, he came up, when he came out of the water, three things happened there. One, the heavens were open, am I right? And the dove came down, and God spoke, am I right? And God said, This is my beloved son. In whom I am well what? Pleased. Now, some people heard it. Some people did not hear it. Some people just said, it turned that. That's what happened in the church today. Some people just, they don't hear. God speaks, but they don't hear. It turned that. That's what you just said. But if you are like the disciples, look at verse 10. Verse 10. Mark chapter 4, verse 10. And when it was done, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. You know, they went back to Jesus and said, Jesus... I don't want to be satisfied with ignorance. And I, I, I want to indulge us that we should not be satisfied with ignorance. Always go back to God and say, God, 
What are you saying? If you come to church, you don't hear anything, go back to God and say, what did you tell me? What did you say in the church? Don't just come and go. His disciples went back to God and to Jesus and he said, can you explain to us? What did you say? Is there any time you come to the presence of God, any time you come to church on Sunday, it's always an opportunity to hear from God. You know, most times we only come to present our wants, but we forget to listen to his words. Sometimes we just want to present our problems, but we forget to listen to his promises. We just want to make requests, but we forget to listen to his reassuring words. You want to tell God everything, but you don't want God to tell you anything. You cannot make its way with that. You see, miracle happens when the word of God coincides with your problem. That's when miracle happens. Miracle is like a coincidence, but it happens when your the, the the problem. Let me use the common man language. When you know when the problems jams the promises. You understand what I'm saying? That is when the miracle happens. Because when I say coincidence, some of them, some use my what am I talking about? When it jams, when prom- problems and promises jams together, what comes out is what is miracle. So anytime you come to His presence, you don't just play around when the word is going on. It's very important. You see, the centurion went to meet Jesus. And when he met Jesus, he said, my daughter is sick. And Jesus said, okay, I'm so busy. I'm going to go with you there. The centurion said, no, 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 no. What did he say? Just speak the word. Speak the word only. Just speak it. Just, just speak that word only. And Jesus said, your, your daughter is made old. And he was made old. That is the power of God's word. You remember Eli to Samuel. Where is Samuel? Samuel was working in the church, but he had not figured out his purpose in life. He was just working. He was just playing like the children play. You know, that's good. They play. But at the time, God wanted to give him a purpose. And God called Samuel. But Samuel was not used to it. Samuel was not used to that. So he went to Eli. And thank God for Eli. He was an old man. He was dim. Yes, he could not correct his children. But that was one good thing Eli did. He told Samuel, when God speaks, what do you say? Speak for thy servant word. Yeah. And that was what changed the life of Samuel. That, that moment was when Samuel knew his purpose. Because at that moment, when God spoke to Samuel, he became a prophet. That was when he actually became a prophet. God sent him as a prophet to go and warn the, the house of Eli. Am I right? That was when he knew his purpose. When God spoke to him. When that's why the word of God... Our children, our youths, don't just let them play around. Don't, especially when it's time for message, don't just let them play around. And I've tried to tell our nursing mothers, let's not give them babies to carry when message is going on. That is the most important time because that's when they can get their purpose in life. You know, let the word of God come. And the word of God is so important. The words of Jesus, you cannot compare it with any other word. And I was sharing with the young, with the young adults recently. You see, the words of Jesus, you cannot compare it with any other person. Hypocrites, you know hypocrites, uh, some of you in the um, health line, you might know him, you have sworn that oath before. His words will just make you an hypocrite. Socrates is a good philosopher, he can speak, he has nice words, but Socrates cannot give you the secrets of life. Abraham Lincoln has spoken words, he has said a lot of things, but the words of Abraham Lincoln cannot give you the fate of Abraham. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King is good, but the words of Martin Luther King cannot make you a king. Only Jesus can transform you, amen? And that's why Jesus said in Hebrews chapter 4, the word of God said, in Hebrews chapter 4, let's quickly open that. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. He said, for the word of God is quick, for the word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Amen? Say so the word of God is quick. The word of God is potent. You know, if you take a drug and you say it's potent, it works. It's powerful. It works. That's how the word of God is. It's potent. And that's when, when God came, it st- you know, the whole word started with what he spake. God came and he saw everywhere was dark, everywhere was hopeless, that everything was void. And God said, let there be what? And there was light. Because when God speaks, it happens. When God speaks, his word is potent. He said, let there be light. And there was what? There was light. Nature obeys God. Everything obeys God. So if your life is void, hopeless, dark, I pray God will speak into your life. 
God's word is potent. God's word is powerful. You know, when Jesus said, it is finished. <laughs> Those are three words that shook the earth. He said, it is finished. There was earthquake. He said, it is finished. There was unpredicted eclipse, total eclipse. This one, scientists could not find out it's coming. It's going to happen, like they are telling us. Total eclipse, because he just said, it is finished. When he said it was finished, the old uh, veil in the temple was torn. Because there is power in what he said. When Jesus said, it is finished, it was finished. Sin, sickness, sorrow, satanic oppression, sadness, it is finished. And it is finished in our lives in Jesus' name. Say, for the word of God is quick and powerful. He said, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Are you seeing what the Bible is saying there? The Bible is saying the word of God can pierce into your body and go to your bone and go to your soul and go to your spirit. You know, if you're in the health line, you'll say a radiotherapy, right? You know, when there is, a, there is x-ray that will show you everything, that will show you your bone, that will show you everything, this one is Godiotherapy. It will go in. It will pierce in. Amen? It will tell you everything there. Supernatural x-ray. Why? Because when you read the word of God, it shows you who you are. It exposes you. It shows you how frail you are. And it gives you the word. That's why we don't play with the word of God. And do you know why this one is different? It penetrates your body. Every unwanted thing in your body, this word can cure it. In your spirit, this word can cure it. In your soul, this word can cure it. The word of God is powerful. It's potent. And it's piercing. I pray God will speak into your life. Now let's go back to Mark chapter 4. Let's go back to Mark chapter 4. Now let's see the problem. We've seen that the word of God is powerful. The word of God can work. So why is it not working in some of our lives? Why is it that God, when God speaks, it doesn't manifest in our life? We've been in this church for many years. Why is the word of God not working? Why don't we see? That's what Jesus wanted to explain. And in Mark chapter 4 verse 14, Jesus started that explanation. So he gave four categories of people. That was point one. Point one is the satanic invasion. Point one, the satanic invasion. Because if Jesus, Jesus said, if the sower is not the problem, not the seed the problem, let us check the soil. Something is happening. Something is happening. Why it is not working? In Mark chapter 4, verse 14, and he said, The sower soweth the world, and these are they by the wayside where the world is sown. But when they have heard, what happens? Are you there? What happens? Satan comment out immediately. That is the satanic invasion. God has spoken. Jesus has spoken. But immediately he speaks. Satan does not waste time. Satan comment out immediately to steal that word away. See, in America, we always have private space. I respect my private... Satan does not respect your private space. That's why you don't give him that provision for him to come. He comes imme- That's why you wonder you come to church after you get home, you start fighting with your wife. You just left church. Some, sometimes it's even in the car, you've not even gotten home. You just left the church. Immediately, you start, you start cursing. What happened to the word? Satan, God, comment immediately, steals it away from you. I pray the Satan will not steal the word away from you. The thief coming up, but to steal, he steals the word. To kill, he kills the seed. And destroy the process of germination, to bring forth fruit, he kills it. And there are ways Satan could come. He could come personally. He can invade you, personal invasion. One person, he just invades you. Like Judas, in Luke chapter 22, verse 3. I will not open it, but you can read it later. The Bible said, and Satan entered into Judas. Judas! Judas, I thought you were a worker. Judas, Judas is the number one financial secretary for the church. <laughs> number one. I think Jesus chose him. Judas, Judas was among those that went and preached the gospel. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan fell as well. I like, Judas was among them. Judas was that powerful. 
But Judas was not careful. Satan entered into him. Everything Jesus had been telling him, he forgot. Everything Jesus had been telling him, Satan stole it away from him. I pray Satan will not steal the world away from you. Sometimes it's not personal. Sometimes it's family. Family invasion. The devil comes through the wife. Or he comes through the husband. Or he comes through the children. And anytime the devil comes, he's not coming for anything. He's targeting the world. Remember Adam and Eve? That was the first marriage. And Adam and Eve, we are still enjoying honeymoon in the Garden of Eden. That was the best honeymoon ever because God, you know, honeymoon that God helped you to arrange. You know, best honeymoon. And you think as they're enjoying this honeymoon, you know, the devil will just give them space. The devil does not give you space. While they were still having honeymoon, the, the devil came in. And the devil did not come to say anything. See how the devil came. Did he say that? Did he say that? You see, he's targeting what God said to you. And he was saying, did he say that you should not eat of that fruit? Are you sure of what he said? And now the devil comes to you. You see, hey, you'll be going to church. Are you sure? Are you sure of what they are telling you? Try that herbalist. Are you sure of what that? Try that. That business is not clean, but try it. Are you sure of what? Try that lie. That was about to Ananias and Sapphira, right? They were also husband and wife. But as they were going to give their money in the church, Satan came and said, wait, wait, wait. Ah, you people are too zealous. Every time you carry money, give the church. Every time you carry money, calm down. Why not calculate it? Remove some and keep in your pocket. Why are you doing the uh, overzealousness? Ah, uh, nah, 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 I don't know, but they didn't tell us who started first. Well, let me not accuse the women, but, you know. But I don't know who started in this one. But both of them agreed. Okay, maybe. Let's keep this money. Oh, no, okay. And both of them died. You know, the devil just cut short their destiny. Because he invaded their family. I pray the Lord, the devil will not invade your family. Every devil around your family shall be cast out in Jesus' name. Sometimes it's societal invasion. Like, let's forget about this country. The devil has already invaded. I mean, a school where you cannot pray. If you, if you see what these people see, see in school, if you see what the youth see in school, drugs, they sell drugs in middle school. It's not new. Ask them. You see drugs, all of them, they smoke. All right? It's not new to them. Boyfriend, girlfriend, everything is, you know, the devil has invaded. And they will say, don't talk about religion. Don't mention Jesus. We don't even pray. No, everybody just, don't criticize. Every, the devil has already invaded this nation. That's why the Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. Church invasion. The devil also enters the church. Look at 2 Corinthians. And I'm not just talking of the Bible, Bible Church. I'm talking as the, the church as a whole. The devil can invade the whole church. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of what? Of Christ. And no matter, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's why you don't follow everybody doing miracles. Ah, they're doing miracles there. You run there. They're doing miracles there. The devil also performs miracles. That's what he's saying. He said, I know my fellow, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan invades the church and begins to allow the false words to be preached. I pray that Satan will not invade your life. I said, I pray Satan will not invade your life. Will be free from every satanic invasion in Jesus' name. Point two. The shallow involvement. Let's go back to Mark chapter 4. Let's go back to Mark chapter 4. Now, these are people that are shallow. They are in the church. They, they might even come to the Palai Bible Church, but they are not deep. You know, they are shallow. Mark, Mark chapter 4. Are you there? Are you opening your Bible? Mark chapter 4. Now, we are going to read verse 16. And these are they, likewise, which are sown on stony ground. Oh, when they have heard the word, they, re, they, they immediately receive it with gladness. But they have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are what? They are offended. You see, they don't have root. 
the Bible, Jesus started with, he said, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, stony ground, stony heart. You've been coming to church. God has been speaking to you, but your heart is still hard. Your heart is still strong like a stone. It's not soft. You cannot get the best from God. God has to break that heart. You have to break the fallow ground of your heart. If you want God's word to, be, to manifest in your life, in Ezekiel 36, verse, verse 26, he said, and I will take away the stony heart, and I will give them an heart of what? Flesh. What do you mean by the heart of flesh? The heart of flesh is sensitive to God's word. The heart of flesh, it retains, it maintains, it sustains the word of God. It's not enough to have revelation. Revelation alone will not take you to any place. It's the application of the revelation that takes you to a higher ground. Tell your neighbor, apply. Tap your neighbor, apply. I'm seeing some people sleeping. That's why I say tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor, apply. Apply. You know, it's not enough for you to have revelation. Apply the word of God. He said, they have stony hearts. Stony hearts, verse 17. And have no roots in themselves. You see, there is no roots. They are not grounded. They are not grounded. And that's what Colossians 2, verse 7 and 8 said. As ye have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk ye him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding always with thanksgiving. See, don't be satisfied with your level. Tell your neighbor, don't be satisfied with your level. Always go. See, if a Christian says, I'm there, you are finished. Immediately you say, I've, I've gotten to the height. You have, what, where have you reached? You know what the Bible said? The Bible said, Till we all come into the unity of faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. Pa I'm not perfect, I don't know. But that's where God wants us to reach. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Do you understand that? He said, unto the measure of the stature of, you know, when Paul writes sometimes, it's like he's looking for English. He doesn't know what to use. You know, he just starts putting everything together. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's where God wants us to reach to. That height. We want to be like Christ. Are you like Christ? Then why are you stopping? Christ said, greater works that I do, you will do. Christ has walked on water. Have you walked on water? Christ will look at somebody I say, be healed. Have you done that? Christ, demons will see Christ. I say, hey, 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 don't touch me. You, they will pass by you. I'm greeting you. <laughs> Where have you reached? We have not reached anywhere. That's why you have to keep going deeper. Seek to know God more. Seek to know. See, Paul, after all his acumen, after his attainment, Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I may be made conformable unto his death. Paul was saying, I, I need to know God more. Why are you satisfied with where you are? Moses. Moses stayed with God. Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights with God. They gave, they gave him 10 commandments. Moses, in fact, God said, I speak face to face with him. But when it was about time for him to go, Moses said, don't give me an angel. If your presence does not go with me. Moses said, I, don't want, I know I've spoken with you. I know, I've, I know we've spent time together. But God, it's not enough. If your presence does not go with me, that is people that want to know God. You will know God more in Jesus' name. Let's go back to Mark, point three. Mark, the sensual interactions. Now, we've seen, you know, the first one, we say Satan invades. The second one, we said they don't have roots. And we have said, today you will have roots. Now, the third category, the sensual interactions. Mark chapter four, from verse 18. And he said, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the world. These are choked up Christians. They are Christians. They come to church. Everything is fine, but they are choked up. Why are we choked up? Number one, the Bible says because of the cares of this world. Number two, he said because of the deceitfulness of riches. Number three, he said because of the lust of other things, cares of this world. That's what we all look at. You know, we are in a country that is moved by money and materialism. And if you are not careful, we allow the cares of this world to take us away. And what did Jesus say? Let's look at it. I want us to read this. In Matthew chapter 6. 
in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, the cares of this world. It takes away the word of God. That's why some of, the, some of us, we don't, have, we don't allow the word of God to dwell in our hearts because of the cares of this world. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25. Say, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. For what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. See, I will be sincere with you. If it was somebody else that said this, I would not agree. If it was somebody else that said, don't think about what you eat. I say, are, are you serious? What is wrong with you? How will I not think of what to eat? How will I not think of what to wear? But you see, who is saying it? Jesus. Because it is Jesus, I, I, can, I cannot argue. I cannot argue. He said, therefore, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, no, for your body. Look at verse 10, 31. He said it again. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where we thou shall be clothed? Do you know another thing there? Jesus knows that you need food. Jesus knows you need water. And Jesus knows that you need clothes. That's why he said, don't think about it. But what is it? he said, verse 32, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. He said, for your heavenly father knoweth. You see? He said, for your heavenly father knoweth that you need, have need of all these things. But what do you do? Seek ye what? First, number one, should be the kingdom of God. That is the mistake most people make. We are Christians. We are good. But God is not number one. That is just the problem. Yeah, God is not saying, oh, don't, don't go to work. Don't do anything. But God is saying that let God be number one. In everything you do, let God be what? Be no, before money, before material things, before meat, before mansions, let God be number one. He said, but seek you first the kingdom of God. And his word and his righteousness and all these things shall be what shall be what? now. So when you are hungry and you have sought God first, you go back to God. God, you said I should seek you first, and now I don't have food. What are you doing? God, you said I should seek you first. Now I don't have clothes to wear. What are you doing? I've sought you first. I've gone to church. I'm doing everything first. So God, why are you not doing your part? But God does not fail. God will always do his part. It's just that most of us, we are afraid. We don't want to give, we don't want to do God first. Ah, if I do God first, who is going to take care of me? Then you are not challenging God. God said, challenge me. Do me first. Do me first. Then ask if I will not give you any other thing. That's what God is saying. The word of God is powerful. But most times we are carried away with the cares of this. And that's why we are choked up. The Bible says this word of, these things of this world will choke us up. Cares of this world, number one. Number two, deceitfulness of riches. This, you know, it's good to be rich, but the riches can be dece deceitful, deceptive. And before you know what's happening, you are gone. That's what Jesus is saying. Remember that young man in Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. That young man said, I've done everything. I've served you. Now, Jesus, tell me. And Jesus said, now, if you want to be perfect, if you want to be perfect, sell everything you have, all right, and follow me. That man said, Kai, that, that one is hard. <laughs> Do you know how much I have? And Jesus knew how much he had. Because if Jesus does not know, Jesus will not tell him to sell. Jesus has already seen him. Jesus knows his bank account. You think Jesus does not know your bank account? <laughs> he knows your bank account. And Jesus said, okay, go and sell everything and follow me. Oh, that man said, no, 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 no. This one, Jesus, I will see you next week. <laughs> Jesus, just go, go ahead. I will see you next week. And Jesus said, it is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So it's good to be rich, but I pray the riches will not take us away from God. Jesus wants us to be rich. It's just that let that riches not affect our work with God. And that's what happened. He said deceitfulness of riches. And do you know why he said deceitfulness of riches? Because you will never be satisfied with your level. You want 10,000 today, you get it. You say, ah, I'm not okay. I need 20. You get 20, you say, ah, no, okay, I can make 50. You get 50, you say, ah, 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 ah. people are there making uh, 100 now. What am I waiting for? You get 100. That's, that's why I say deceitfulness of, it will deceive you. You will never be satisfied. Even though you are rich, but you will never believe you are rich. You want more. Why are politicians looking for money? They, they can, they are, the money they have can do four generations, but they are still gathering money. They still want more. That is deceitfulness of riches. 
I pray we will not be deceived by riches in Jesus' name. Now, what's the tough thing that chokes the word of God? He said the lust of other things. Lost. You are born again. You are good. You, are, you, know, you serve God, but lost. Lost of the eyes. Lost of the flesh. David. After all you know, David, after all you know, after all the Psalms you've written, after all the songs you've composed, David, you allow Bathsheba to bring you down. Lost of the eyes. The thing choked the word of God in his life. Samson, after all the power you have, Samson was a macho man. Nobody can stand him. A one army man that can destroy all the whole nation. Can you, have you seen that kind of man before? That will use a jawbone and kill more than 100 people. That, that is not ordinary. Strong man. They cannot even hold him. They put chains. What is that? He tears it into pieces. They put gates. What is that? He carries it up with one hand and throws it away. Delilah. Delilah. <laughs> Delilah. Just one single Delilah. Without, without fight, Delilah brought him down. Lost of the eyes. Lost of the flesh. I pray these things will not choke us up. I say, I pray these things will not choke us up. And that's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk. What does it mean to walk? Sometimes we just hear walk in the spirit. I will quickly give you that acronym. W. You watch. When you say walk in the spirit, watch. When you say walk in the spirit, attend to the spirit of God. The spirit of God will always tell you something. You always, the spirit of God will always tell you what to do. Attend to that spirit of God. When you say walk, learn from God. Learn from God. God will teach you. God will teach you things. God will guide you. God will direct you. But learn from God. And when he says walk, kneel in prayers. You see, don't be too busy that you don't have time to pray. That's it. If you are too busy, you don't have time to pray, you allow these things to choke the word of God in you. That's why you will come on Sunday, you will come on Monday, you will come Wednesday, you will come Friday, you will come for a workers' meeting, and your life is remaining the same. Why? Things of this world are choking your life. I pray it will not happen in Jesus' name. Let's go to the last point. The supernatural increase. There will be increase. I said there will be increase. You are not saying amen like people that believe. I said there will be increase. In Mark chapter 4 verse 20. Mark chapter 4 verse 20. This is the category God wants us to be. And we'll be there in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 4 verse 20. He said, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Amen? On good ground. He said, such they hear the word and receive it. They have receptors that are working. You know, their receptors are not outdated. God speaks to them and they receive it. They hear the word and they what? They receive it and bring forth fruit. I pray we'll bring forth fruit. I said, I pray we'll bring forth fruit. They hear the word. They receive it, and they bring forth fruits. Bible says, "Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. That is the fruit of redemption. The fruit of redemption. We also see the fruit of righteousness. It says in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him. I say it should be well with you. It shall be well with you. He said, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. They shall eat the fruit of their doings. Because they hear the word of God and they receive it. And the word of God is working in their life. In Psalm 1 verse 3, that's the fruit of riches now. Psalm 1 verse 3. He said, and it shall be like a tree. I pray you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Do you know what that means? It means you will never be dry. Nothing in your life will be dry. Because there is, a, there is rivers of water around you. He said, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He said, that bring it forth fruit in its season. Your season has come. I said, your season has come. He said, that bring it forth fruit in its season. Its leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever it doeth shall what? Shall prosper. That's why it can never be poor. See, I will never be poor. I will prosper in Jesus' name. He said, I will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, the fruit of righteousness. Then he said, the fruit of rejoicing. Uh, Deuteronomy 30 verse 9, fruit of rejoicing. He said, and the Lord thy God 
will make thee plenteous in every good work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. Say, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good. I said, the Lord will rejoice over thee for good. And he rejoiced as he rejoiced over their fathers. That's what we are saying. This category, they bring forth fruits. Fruits. Fruits are coming in. Fruit of righteousness, of redemption, of riches, they are there. And that's the category all of us will be in Jesus' name. And what does he say in Mark chapter 4 verse 20? And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60 some an hundred, some one thousand. I don't know where you are going. Where are you going? Some two thousand, some three thousand. Will you stay? Will you remain in thirty? I said, will you remain in thirty? That's why you need to keep going higher. The Lord wants you to keep increasing. Year by year, you are increasing. Amen. Year by year, you are increasing. You are not dependent. That's why you know I listen to somebody that said, and that's why Jesus comes every year. You remember that part where he came to a place and it has not brought fruit. He said, leave it. This year also. All right? Another year we will check. Another year we will check. Another year we will check. You must not remain at the same level every year. Every year you must keep going higher. You must keep going higher. You must keep increasing. That's why you started with 30, then 60, some 100. And some of you stop at 100. I will not stop at 100. I'll keep going, increasing and increasing. That is the plan of God for you. That is the plan of God for your family. That is the plan of God for everything that concerns you. Supernatural increase. And you shall have increase in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to rise up and begin to pray. I begin to say, Lord, speak into my life. Lord, speak into my life. Lord, speak into my life. I want an increase in my life. I want an increase in my life. I want supernatural increase in my life. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is potent. The word of God is piercing. When it speaks, it happens. When it speaks, when it speaks, it's come to pass. Begin to pray. Begin to command every devil that has been invading your life. The devil that has been invading your personal life. Begin to command that devil to get out of your life. The devil that has been invading your family life. Begin to command that devil to get out of your life. The devil that has been invading your life. Invading your business. Evading everything that concerns you, begin to command that devil to get out of your life. No more satanic invasion. Put a fence around you. Put a fence around you. Put a fence around your family. Put a fence around you. Put a fence around everything that concerns you. He says, Satan comment immediately to steal the word. The word of God will be effective in your life. The word of God will have power in your life. The word of God will be potent in your life. The word of God will pierce into your life. And every unwanted cells, every unwanted thing in your life will be taken away. Every unwanted thing in your soul shall be taken away. Every unwanted thing in your spirit shall be taken away. Pray that the Lord will give you a good heart. A heart of flesh that retains the word of God. A heart of flesh that sustains the word of God. Pray that the Lord will help you to be rooted and built up in him. Pray that you will know more of God. Pray that you will know more of God. Pray that we will know more of God. Say that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. He said unto the measure of his stature of the fullness of Christ. We will know more of God. We will know more of God. Those things that have been choking up our lives shall be taken away. The cares of this world choking up our lives will be taken away. The deceitfulness of riches choking our lives will be taken away. The lust of other things choking our lives will be taken away. Pray the Lord will give you the grace to walk in the Spirit. The Lord will give you the grace to walk in the Spirit. The Lord will give you the grace to walk in the Spirit. You will walk in the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I begin to speak into your life. Pray there will be increase. There will be increase on every side. There will be increase on every side. Everything that will hinder the increase, the Lord will take it away. You shall have the fruit of righteousness. 
the fruit of redemption, the fruit of riches, the fruit of rejoicing. If you have not been rejoicing, you will rejoice from today on. We are going to keep going higher and higher. From 30 to 60. From 60 to 100. From 100 to 1,000. From 1,000 to 5,000. Higher and higher. We keep going higher and higher. Lord, speak into my life. Lord, speak into my life. Father, speak into my situation. Speak into everything that concerns me. Speak into my situation, O oh Lord. Speak into my storm, O oh Lord. Speak into my life, O oh Father. Your word is powerful. Your word is potent. Speak into my life, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I said, in Jesus' name, we pray. If you believe there will be increase in your life, I said, in Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because your word is potent. We thank you because your word is powerful. We thank you because your word is piercing. Father, Lord, we pray that you are going to speak into our lives today. Every situation here, any situation it might be, tough situation, soft situation, Situation in the body, in the soul, in the spirit. Father, I pray your word that pierces into the body, marrow, spirit, soul, and body. Father, I pray to speak into our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, I pray everything that has not allowed your word to bear fruit in our lives. Everything that has been choking the word of God in our lives. The cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. The lust of other things that have been choking the word of God in our lives. That will not allow the word to germinate in our lives. Father, I pray you will take those things away in Jesus' name. Every satanic invasion into our personal life. Every satanic invasion into our private life. Every satanic invasion into our family. Through the wife, through the husband, through the child. In the church, Father, I command every satan coming around us to be cast away in Jesus' name. From today on, there shall be increase. Increase on every side. He said we'll go from 30 to 60. From 60 to 100. And we'll keep going higher and higher in every ramification of our lives. In Jesus' name, I cast out every stunted growth. Everything that will not allow us to grow. Let it be taken away in Jesus' name. As we live here, the devil will not steal this word away from us. The word will continue to bear fruit in our lives. Thank you because you know you've answered. We worship and exalt your holy name. For in Jesus' name we pray. If you believe that word, shout a big amen. Another big amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Keep the Lord a clap. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely. Goodness and message shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Tell five people, God bless you.